320,000 bags of fertilizer have been allocated specifically for the coffee sector. And we will be working with cooperatives to make sure this fertilizer is distributed at the nearest possible destination to the farmers. These interventions are expected to boost smallholder farmer earnings from Kenya shillings 300,000 to 500,000 per acre annually by the year 2027. The dairy sector remains a vital value chain with a quick turnaround impact on households in the economy. The government of Kenya has released and you members approved three billion shillings to modernize the new KCC, ensure farmers are paid on time and maintain a high price of Kenya shillings 50 per liter. As a result, intake to KCC has increased from 100,000 liters a day to 220,000 liters a day by last month. Other strategic interventions include the extension of duty-free imports for feed manufacturing raw materials, subsidized artificial insemination services, and the reduction of sexed semen costs from 7,000 to 2,900 through the Kenya Animal Genetic Resource Center. These measures have led to a 14% increase in milk production from 4.6 billion liters in 2022 to 5.2 billion liters in 2023, with projections exceeding 6 billion liters this year. The value of exported dairy products has nearly doubled, rising from Kenya shillings 4.8 billion in 2022 to Kenya shillings 7.2 billion in 2023. These gains demonstrate how targeted policies can deliver tangible benefits to dairy farmers and drive growth in our economy. Honorable members, by 2022, the education sector was in a crisis with a lack of clarity in transition to the competence-based curriculum, a shortage of 110,000 teachers and 23 out of 40 public universities were technically bankrupt and at risk of closure. Among those facing severe challenges were huge institutions, such as my own alma mater, University of Nairobi, Kenyatta University, Mo University, Egerton University, Maseno University, Masinde Moliro University. To address this issue in our education sector, we have already hired, as you know, members, 56,000 teachers and are in the process of recruiting another 20,000 by January next year. We have also ensured the seamless transition of learners from primary to junior secondary and domiciled grades seven, eight, and nine in primary school, optimizing the use of existing infrastructure, ensuring the safety of young learners, and protecting parents from the high costs associated with boarding schools far away. Recognizing the financial challenges faced by our universities and TVETs, we introduced a new student-centered higher education funding model. This model gives priority to the most vulnerable students, offering them up to 95% government support, while also pulling our universities back from the brink of collapse. The remaining challenges for a few universities like Moy University are related to internal administrative and governance issues, which I have given firm instructions that they should be addressed. To further enhance access to higher education, we launched the Open University of Kenya, and this house approved that exercise, paving the way for more students to achieve their academic goals. The institution's first cohort of students is scheduled to graduate next week on the 29th of November, 2024. Honorable members, universal health coverage is a cornerstone of our transformation agenda and a matter that touches every Kenyan family. Despite health being a devolved function, we acknowledge the immense financial burden that comes with health. Counties, have struggled with shortages of medicine, equipment, sometimes staff, 
hindering service delivery, and leaving countless Kenyans with suboptimal access to healthcare. It would have been easy for me to step back and leave this responsibility to counties alone. But that would have been a disservice to Kenyans and a betrayal to our constitution. Instead of engaging in debates about healthcare being devolved, I have chosen the hardest but necessary path of addressing this challenge head on. Health delivery is not just about fulfilling a constitutional mandate by whatever level of government. It is about ensuring that healthcare is not a privilege for the few who can afford and a pipe dream for the many who cannot. For years, NHIF was saddled with debts and inefficiencies, and healthcare was being severely and negatively impacted. For far too long, too many households have lived on the edge, just one inlet away from financial catastrophe. Our healthcare system has historically neglected the poor and vulnerable, leaving them without any option, while private sector medical covers remained out of reach for the majority. This is precisely what we will correct through the provision of universal health coverage. This agenda is not just about a promise. It is about a bold commitment to deliver health through transformative financing reforms, making healthcare accessible and affordable, digitizing our healthcare services to enhance efficiency, eliminate fraud, and stop corruption, and to empower a skilled and motivated health workforce. To honor our commitment on the universal health coverage, I signed into law four groundbreaking legislation on the 19th of October, passed by this August House. The Social Health Insurance Act replaced the outdated National Hospital Insurance Fund and established the Social Health Authority, which oversees three essential funds. This modern framework ensures that every Kenyan, especially the most vulnerable, can access quality healthcare services when they need it most. The shift from the National Health Insurance Fund model to Taifa Care is fundamental and radical in both scale and character. NHIF, if I give you a bit of example, NHIF served a few salaried Kenyans and those who could afford to pay. But Taifa Care covers every Kenyan, regardless of employment or financial status. Secondly, Despite serving a limited class of citizens, NHIF nevertheless accumulated billions of shillings of debt because of misalignment between contributions and the actual cost of healthcare. Taifa Care has undertaken an accurate costing of all healthcare-related goods and services in order to provide timely, effective, and efficient service to every Kenyan that is affordable. Additionally, the NHIF had a waiting period lasting between registration and eligibility for service. I think it was like about three months. Under Taifa Care, citizens are eligible for all services upon registration. I therefore urge every Kenyan to take the most important step in securing dependable health care for themselves and their families. Register. Register now or at the earliest possible opportunity.